Hello everyone, welcome. So today we are going to talk about agile process in Scale. So once again, I welcome you guys to Scale, and this is Nishan Makkar. So now I'm going to talk to you about agile process or agile, agile methodology and it's like any other process or the methodology which is uh, used for uh, like normal development and testing or basically software development life cycle I'll say so it's like any other model waterfall or V or prototype or etc but this is uh, in business these days and 80 to 90 percent of organization especially startups and the companies which are actually uh, growing fast and uh, also want the results quickly are using a child and as uh, everyone must have been aware that yeah people are looking for it in order to achieve the faster results in minimum time and the changes are quicker the results are faster and that makes uh, the organization to grow uh, much faster and the only trick here is you have to follow the agile process sorry, the agile process very very precisely in order to achieve better and better results we are going to talk about how this process works so let's talk about it from the beginning so in the agile what we uh, start with is basically a scrum team so there is always a team which is responsible for handling the whole software or any project or any application so we make a scrum team based on that and scrum team usually involves developers QA but so I'll say QA team and dev team here the major person again here is project product owner or project owner but mostly it is project on product owner or business analyst who actually defines all the requirements and as you might be aware that that team is doing developments QA team is testing it sometimes there is environment team as well but they rarely come here in the picture but uh, that's maybe sometime initially when environment setup is there or when there are issues with the environment but that's something which is uh, <clears throat> exceptional and the, after the product owner there is another major guy who is the scrum master so scrum master is actually uh, driving this uh, scrum team but when you say driving it doesn't mean that uh, he's senior or he's like uh, the manager or something like that but he's the only guy who is driving the scrum team and is like agile certified and also have all the knowledge about how the agile works so he makes sure that agile process is in place every time during the uh, software development or the project is going on or any application has been built so yes scrum master is actually uh, agile certified or has the knowledge about agile and product owner or BA again as I said is <laughs> the person who is actually driving that requirements who has the knowledge about requirements for example if you are in a client facing organization it will be actually BA who will uh, talk to clients and get all the requirements and give to devil QA so that's basically how the scrum team works and they will discuss everything here before going further I like to tell you that there are certain tools as well which are available uh, which actually follow the uh, agile process like Jira or Ready so they actually uh, enhance or actually implement the agile process in their functionalities so that's how that's how it looks like that's the scrum team and that's these are the tools and then <clears throat> these this team is basically a uh, flat hierarchy as I said no one is uh, actually <laughs> reporting right now to anyone uh, so QA leads or engineering managers or dev leads are not basically uh, <clears throat> treated like the managers or leads here and most of them even don't even join the meetings so <clears throat> they just 
they are just QA. QA team mostly involve the core developers and develop, uh, testers. And then uh, we have the meeting word which I'm using is not basically called as meeting in terms of agile. So you can say it as a sprint or you can say basically uh, like it is basically a stand-up call or scrum call so it can be like uh, at the same location or it can be basically uh, if like someone is onshore like in US or Canada or somewhere like that and if someone is in India or like in any other country like Malaysia or Philippines so they are basically on a call conference call or video conferencing or something like that so that's how basically uh, that terms is referred in terms of agile so suppose we have an application uh, let's say we have an application which is basically called as uh, let's say <coughs> meta life uh, health portal right so in this application what we have is basically we are developing it and we are testing it before starting anything in agile we define two terms which is DOD and DOR so this is basically called as definition of ready and this is basically called as definition of done so now when we have definition of done and definition of ready here whenever you have definition of done it could be basically when uh, you can say that testing is done suppose your code has been reviewed and merged then functional and non functional QA is completed or done right then the other is let's say no bugs except known bugs or you can say known but the effort bugs then you can also say like it could be BA assessment or you can say UAT is completed so that's something which we can say or you can also say uh, production environment is ready to deploy so let's say in my case these are all the example of uh, done the definition of ready we have uh, some of them as definition of ready is business requirements or values are well defined then we also have another value which is story is user story for themes are well defined and sent to all the team members and then you can also say acceptance criteria is defined so these are as I am saying again and again these are just my accepting criteria just an example but it's not like uh, it's something which uh, we will be having same but you will see they are mostly they are like generic right so that's all we have let's say so now we can say we are ready to actually start development or testing uh, when we have uh, all these things so basically before going further I would like to tell yes development testing 
goes hand in hand in hand and they keep developing and testing and once they are done uh, QA finalize and put a stamp and once it is done they just roll out the release right so the code is reviewed and uh, the QA is done no no but defects and production is ready to be deployed UAT is also done that's what I'm saying is uh, <coughs> definition of done and these are like definition of ready which means like business requirements are met user story or themes are well defined and sent to all the team members and accepting criteria is defined that means uh, we are ready to start the sprint one and this is definition of done so we are ready to uh, we are ready to complete the sprint one similarly sprint two and whatever uh, sprint num name or number we have so that's how we usually define we are ready to start sprint and ready to stop or complete the sprint so now let's say we have another factor here which is basically what we call a sprint right so as we have this particular portal let's say it has so let's talk about 100 user stories are present in our backlog so we are talking in terms of uh, jira so whenever you create a new project or application here Jira has two folders. One is backlog. Let's say we put 100 user story in that backlog. Right? So once you have this, what we do is whenever we create a project and when definition of ready is meet, when DOR is met, so what we do is we start actually moving those stories like some of those story into current active sprint so let's say in this sprint we are doing 30 stories right so current active sprint now have 30 and backlog has 70 stories left so now once this is done and you have the 70 and 30 value here so we are going to work on these 30 stories so now we have 30 stories in sprint 1 let's say and then in sprint 2 we will be doing second uh, 20 stories then sprint 2 has 20 sprint 3 might have 10 and similarly sprint 4 have like 40 or like any other number but how we decide that so estimation of sprints estimation of tasks so this is just estimation of task and sprint so yes we have different estimation techniques that's one thing then there are poker games which are played between team members saying how much time it will take and people will analyze that stuff accordingly so by the here what I mean there are different estimation techniques of course there are but uh, sometimes they don't work so we just play with poker games between team members so for example our developer says I can do one task in two days but the other says in three days and we keep uh, like asking all the developers so once they are done we actually uh, based on the discussion we actually reach a conclusion and uh, <coughs> analyze the estimates accordingly and draw the conclusion so once you ha draw the conclusion you know what's happening here right so yeah <coughs> you know how much time it's going to take so these these decisions are not based on just like uh, rough uh, guess but yes uh, if people justify what they have to do how much time it takes so it's basically based on the experiences how much uh, a person take to develop something or how much the environment setup takes or how much the bugs or defects take so based on past experiences we actually uh, the member that actually define the estimates and actually give results there so once you have all those things here we have a uh, <clears throat> like we can start with the sprint one so let's say we have sprint one which has 
30 tasks as 30 stories as I said now uh, what will happen so basically <coughs> Dev and QA will discuss everything about those stories everything about uh, those tasks and uh, start developing and testing on that particular part but then we can have the estimation of every story and give uh, some points on the basis of that. So let's say the first story can be given three points, and then third story can be given eight, and similarly, oh sorry, five, eight, and then thirteen, and then twenty-one. So it's a Fibonacci series, and you have to define these points to every story. So it is not something number of days, but it is the complexity of story. The higher the number, the higher the complexity. Suppose ST1 takes is five com uh, has the complexity of five, and ST3 has the complexity of twenty one, and ST9 has the complexity of one. So these are some sub stories which have different complexity. So based on these complexities, uh, we actually define our uh, estimates. So suppose I have uh, four tasks, uh, like in our case there are 30, so let's take an example of three only, three stories, right? So now we have three stories, 5, 21 and 1, so this will, should basically take around let's say one day, or this should take around three days, and this should be like a matter of uh, half day, let's assume that. So based on the complexity, yes, the number of days increases, but that's not actually equal to the uh, complexity. But of course, a person can be wrong about it, or a person might not be sure, but that's not something which is a very hard code value. But yes, this should be sure that if you are giving 5 and the other should be given 21, then make sure ST3 is complex and comparison to in comparison to story 1. So that's how we usually define the complexity and then estimate on the basis of that so that's how when we define everything uh, so basically dev and QA uh, discuss various points dev plus QA plus scrum master plus BA or you can say product owner equal to scrum team so they discuss about different values or parameters for that particular product or project etc. So now once we have this, what we do, we talk about uh, all the infra involved. And then we talk about all the uh, like stakeholders. We share all related docs, links, or you can say emails, etc. Test cases if there are code, test cases, etc. So yeah, all these things are involved. So once you have all these things ready, yeah, uh, we actually start discuss all about that and start the testing. But before this, let's say this uh, happens on day one, then on day zero, we have another one meeting which is basically deciding all infra, deciding all setup like DB, setup uh, like for, for server end. For client then so this involves like different browsers or tools or ex something which is required in the uh, software or anything which is required in the system of any QA or developer or any other guy and this is like uh, also the infra of server end if you need to install any new software or like you want any kind of specific configuration on the server, so all these things are basically decided and discussed here. And then once we have this, this is basically start of sprint one, and you discuss this and you get to work. 
so that's all work right so then it keeps happening and there is a daily call about <coughs> scrum call or stand up meetings uh, about those activities so what we discuss in the scrum call are basic is basically uh, tasks challenges and blockers so that's those are the major things which we discuss and every person is given approximately two minutes only and shouldn't be given more because it makes meeting uh, like time consuming and uh, also doesn't support in completing your work like day to day tasks what we are discussing right now so once you have all these tasks challenges and broker which you discuss you get out of the scrum call and start working so again work so once you have all these things figured out you keep doing uh, the meetings and keep developing and testing but <clears throat> you are not uh, like 100 percent sure like whatever you are doing is actually correct or whatever estimated you give you are actually right so you might have to rework so that if this is your work or sometimes you are people are just lazy or they are have like some kind of medical emergency or they are like uh, not well or they have uh, some marriage or some functions at the home so th at that point of time resources are not present and that reduces our manhood so once you have less manhood your work is impacted so like that what you have to do we calculate the velocity on the basis of that so taking the above example what we had was three tasks right one five twenty one and one so it's twenty seven so it's 27 in total and then based on these three tasks let's say only two were completed which is 5 and 1 so velocity is 6 by 27 which is approximately uh, like 4 point something so it approximately 40 percent oh sorry uh, This is approximately 22 point some percent, so I'll say 23 percent approximately here. So that's how you calculate the velocity because the task which were done was having a velocity or the complexity, well, which is 5 and 1, and this one is not done yet. So, yeah, that's the velocity. So it is calculated after the sprint only, and this is a very low velocity and it is not good result. So people usually should give correct estimates and should also plan for the leave earlier if there are any and take care of all the uh, surrounding stuff which I might actually impact the release. For example, environment stuff or any non-functional tools or testing which is required. So all these things should be covered separately. Now, once you have this velocity here, now let's talk about uh, if after every uh, like sprint, we have our retrospective meeting but before that I like to tell you there is a meeting during a sprint which is basically a refinement or grooming session which actually uh, is picking all tasks for next sprint talking about what all we require and what all we have to achieve etc so that's how we actually plan for the future about in the refinement and grooming meeting if there are particular tasks which we need to pick later on any different tasks any backlog and what are the new tasks what are the like uh, criteria which we will be using and how we will be achieving those targets manners, technologies, uh, all these th things are considered in this session. Then we have retrospective meeting at the end. So during one sprint before what we are planning for. And this is after the sprint 
what we are doing is we are actually doing the retrospective meeting talking about what went well what challenges did we face what we what are we looking in future and how to mitigate those things future in terms of uh, strategies and risks possible better criteria for defining and developing applications and we also look for like what were the blockers or you can say what challenges or blockers did we face so this is all about uh, retrospective meeting so that we don't make the same mistakes again and again so we always sit down and talk about it and make sure everything is right so <clears throat> in order to do all these things yes we need have a process in place and everything is there and it is fantastic trust me it is pretty much fantastic but the only thing you have to take care is you don't uh, mess up in terms of uh, human relationships so if you have a good team if you have a great team if you are actually having everything uh, in control you can actually have all this process and get the all the benefits of a agile methodology and that's going to be amazing amazing trust me so that's all from my end. This is Nishan Makkar from Chinese Sales Skill. Uh, signing off now. Bye bye.